Welcome to the first session of where we talk about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. I'm with Corey Webb, and Corey has uh, been a friend for a long time and has worked with teaching and helping people to grow in their faith in Christ. And, and so it's just a, a blessing to be with you. And, and we're gonna be talking today about how to follow Jesus and what that means. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He also said in Matthew 10, verses 24 and 25, he talked about a teacher and a student and how the student is not greater than the, the teacher. And right. so I want us just to define a little bit of what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus or, or a learner of Jesus? What, what does that mean? Okay, well, you know, today we, we understand when we think about a learner, it, you, we usually all begin in a place where I don't know what I don't know. Hmm. But then we move to a place where we begin to know what we don't know. And that's where the learning really begins. Okay, so let, let's, let's stop there before we go any further, make sure we understand that. So I, I don't know what I don't know, and then we come to, I know what I don't know. So what, are, are you saying that we have to come to the place where we recognize that we need help, that we, we, we don't know everything, we need to grow our, our lives, our faith. Is, is that what you're saying? Absolutely, or? we come to a place where we begin to recognize that there are things that we need to learn, that, that we don't know what we thought we knew at one time, and there's a whole new world that's opened up to, wow, I need to learn about that. Well, this is what maybe when Jesus walked up to Peter, I can't imagine because it says, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And he left everything and he began to follow Jesus. I mean, to me, that's incredible. It's like someone going into a business and saying, hey, follow me and I'll make you a, a, a fishers of men and, and leaving the business to go follow Jesus. How does one develop that kind of heart, that kind of learner spirit for Jesus? Uh, and, and, and well, maybe let me back mm -hmm. up and ask this question. What's the difference in learning of Jesus and learning about Jesus? And because I, we're talking about two different things here, aren't we? Right. Learning about Jesus, someone could be in a mode where they're learning about something but not be really convinced that there are really things they need to learn. But when you learn of him, they say today that 70% of learning is visual. And what Peter began to do is he began to watch Jesus and that he began to learn more and more as he watched Jesus work in love with people. And so what we need to do to learn of Jesus then, what I'm hearing from you is that we need to look into the Word of God and see how Jesus loved people, how he cared for people, how he lived his life. And then, and that's what we're learning. We're learning of him. In other words, not just about him, but learning of who he is in our lives. And let me throw out one other thing to you and see what you think about this. Learning of Jesus is learning to walk with him, not just uh, know about him, but to walk daily with him and, and, and grow into his likeness. I, I think that has something to do with the following Christ and learning of right. Christ. Right, right. You're recognizing his lifestyle and you recognize Jesus as our greatest role model. And then we're beginning to take on that lifestyle and take on those mannerisms in that heart and live that out wherever, wherever we live. Well, okay. Now, this all sounds good, I know, to, to, to me and to you and to a lot of people, but people say, well, yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's easier said than sure. done uh, because when you look at Jesus, I mean, total perfection, absolute purity, no greater love. And then we could say, oh, uh, there's no way. So what are some of the hindrances and how do we come to the place where we learn to grow in his grace, to become like him? Well, a hindrance would be when we think that we know better. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. When I, was, when I trained to run my first marathon, my trainer had told me to, when I began the marathon, to look at my watch at mile one and make sure that I wasn't running too fast. And I, at that point, I was convinced that if I just watched this other person that at mile one, he'll know what I'm supposed to be doing and I won't need to look at my watch. So mile one came and I was, and I thought, man, I feel a little winded. I, I, can't, I gotta be running 
faster than eight minute miles, but I did not look at my watch. Mile two came and I thought, I may not have it today. Mile three came and I thought, I gotta look at my watch. I looked at my watch and realized I was running six minute miles and I did not look <laughs> at my watch earlier. Hey, so, I, I've run marathons, so I know what that means. So I wasn't convinced, but I should have been convinced. Now, don't misunderstand me, but do you know what this reminds me of? What's that? <laughs> Adam and Eve in the garden. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, Eve said, hey, God said this way, I know better, I can do it my way, and, and, and we have the result of it today. So, and, and so that is an incredible hindrance because that's really pride. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Thinking, we I, know I know better than the teacher, and that's what Jesus was saying. Right. right. So when we learn of him, we've got to say, okay, Jesus, you know how to do this better than I do. I'm gonna look to you, I'm gonna trust you, and I'm gonna, uh, and I'm gonna learn how to do this. Now, there is then the power, the empowerment, and I think this is something that's different from any other aspect of life. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things, hey, I'm an expert in this, I know how to do this, but we have to come to the place, I think, in the Christian life right. where we say, I can't do this. I need God's mm -hmm. power, I need God's grace, because following Jesus is, is not just a religious deal, right. a, a, a obligation, a, of rules mm -hmm. and regulations, but but following Jesus is is appropriating His grace. It's by you His bet. grace that we come into this relationship. It's a mm -hmm. grace relationship. So let's let's talk about that and 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 the the relationship of grace to what it means to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, where where does grace come in to the discipline? The saying, okay, I need to be like Jesus. How, how does that work? Well, I think, I think a way to look at that is like in a relationship to a father and a son, mm -hmm. is we are taking on the role of a son. Mm -hmm. And our father knows best and he is leading us and he's gonna love us no matter what. A great way to explain grace is like an acrostic, God's riches at Christ's expense. Mm -hmm. We get the riches, the blessing of God at the expense of what Jesus has already paid for us. Mm -hmm. So we're recognizing that our father in heaven knows better and he is pleased with, even though we may make mistakes, he is still gonna be pleased with us through Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. Yeah, so we, we enter into this relationship of following him by his grace, it's not by our works. And as we follow, we learn his grace helps us to grow. It's, uh, yes. one, I think probably the greatest lesson that I learned early on in the Christian life was that I could not live it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember I had this, this issue with jealousy and I'd get jealous and I said, I'm not gonna be jealous, I'm not gonna be. And I'd try not to be jealous. And the harder I tried, the more jealous I became. Mm -hmm. And then one day someone shared with me, Sammy, it's not what you can do, it's what he's done in you yes. and what he's done for you. And so in that moment, I just prayed and said, God, if it's left up to me, I'm gonna be jealous. So I'm mm -hmm. trusting you to give me the grace mm -hmm. and the power yes. not to be jealous. And the next time I started to get jealous, I said, okay, Lord, here, here it goes. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to you, I'm trusting you. So let, let, let's wrap this all up. So grace, really humility is at the core of where grace is applied. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to have a heart of humility to be a learner, to be a follower of mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, what I'm hearing you say is humility is of prime importance. Is that correct? Yes, it's a prime character trait of Jesus that Jesus himself as our greatest role model modeled humility. He was always willing to serve. He did things not out of selfish ambition, but he did things to be a blessing to the bigger picture, the kingdom, the plan that God had. So humility is important, and I want us to talk about that a little more.